In this video, I want to do an example of finding oscillatory motion. So let's say we have a system that has an initial position of uh, negative 25 centimeters, 27 5 centimeters towards the negative x-axis. It has a velocity, initial velocity equal to 50 centimeters per second. And it has a period of 3 halves seconds. And I want to find what is the expression that describes this oscillatory motion. I want to find the position function of time given in this form where we have the position is some amplitude times a trig function, cosine of some phase given that by omega t plus phi naught. All right, so how would I go about uh, coming up with this? Well, this x, this initial position, x zero, what that means is the position function evaluated at t is equal to zero. Well, that's simply uh, amplitude times cosine of phi naught. Now, the uh, velocity, and that's the, uh, is simply the velocity function of time evaluated at t is equal to zero. And so we uh, came up with that the last time by taking the derivative. Remember the velocity oops, is equal to the derivative of the position. And so that means the velocity is equal, I sort of ran a space, I'll put it over here. The velocity is equal to negative omega a sine omega t plus phi naught. So that evaluated at t is equal to zero is negative omega a sine uh, phi naught. And so if I want to be able to uh, solve these, then what I have are these two positions, and I want to find what is a and what is phi naught. I also want to know what omega is, but I know omega is, is related to the period, and so uh, I know I can come up with that too. In fact, let's do that right now. That's, that's probably the, that's the easy one. I know that omega is equal to 2 pi over the period, and so that's um, 4 pi over 3. 2 pi divided by 3 halves is 4 pi over 3, and this is now in radians per second. Okay, so that leaves me with finding A and uh, phi naught, and I have these two equations to do it. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation here, the second equation, and divide the first equation because I think I doing that I can get rid of the amplitude and I'll end up with one equation and one unknown. So just to if to look at that separately, I have v0 equal v0, the initial velocity, negative angular frequency times amplitude times the sine of the phase constant, and I'll divide that by the initial position, which is equal to the amplitude times cosine of the phase constant. These uh, amplitude divide, sine and divide by cosine gives me tangent. And I'm left with uh, tangent of phi naught time, well, negative omega is equal to the initial velocity divided by the initial position. Or, just solving now for tangent of the phase constant is equal to negative initial velocity divided by initial position omega. So I know uh, initial velocity and position, and so I can uh, calculate that. 
if I put then 25 centimeters over uh, 50 centimeters per second, I have the omega in uh, radians per second, and I can calculate that. I get tangent phi naught is equal to 3 over 2 pi. If I put in all those values, which gives me what I should say is, <laughs> if I put this into my calculator, this will give me a phi naught of 25.52 degrees. And maybe I want it in radians, but at the moment I'll just I'd keep it in degrees, makes it easier for me. And so now I can go back and uh, I, I find, make me a different color, amplitude is equal to uh, x naught over cosine of phi naught. And I know all these now. I can calculate this, and I get 27.7 .7 centimeters. And gosh, I must be done. But no, wait, you know, I should, you know, my, my strategy tells me that once I get to an end, I should check my result. So let's go ahead and, and check this. I have my initial position. Um, x at, uh, well, x naught, which is equal to, so x naught is here, uh, a cosine um, phi naught, which is equal to uh, 25 centimeters. Um, wait a minute. It's supposed to be negative. And I realize, oh, right. I mean, I used just sort of positive 25 here divided by cosine to give me an amplitude of 27.7. Um, and so this x naught is supposed to be negative, but the amplitude can't be negative. The amplitude is a positive number. It is the maximum displacement. It oscillates between a positive a and negative a. So the amplitude can't be negative. So what is going on? So this is one of those times where it's terribly important to be able to go back and forth between mathematical and graphical representation. And the problem is that this equation right here has more than one solution. And when I put it into my calculator, it chose for me one of the solutions, and it did not give me the other one. And so let's take a look at exactly what that means. Let's go to, to look at some graphical representations. So let's first look at the tangent function. So as a function of theta, tangent of theta, and so if here's pi and 2 pi, it has an asymptote. First, it goes to infinity at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 not very good tangent function there and then it goes through cycles through again here and goes zeros at pi and 2 pi. So this is tangent uh, uh, of theta as, as a function of, of position, the function of uh, angle, sorry. And so if I have some value of, of tangent here, tangent phi naught, that is equal to, say, uh, you know, this is 3 over um, 2 pi here, there are in fact two possible solutions. This one, which is say uh, 25 in, in degrees, about 25.5 degrees here, as well as this one, which is 180 plus 25. So this angle here is 180 plus 
five two or two hundred and five point five two degrees. So there are two possible solutions to the equation tangent phi naught is equal to 3 over 2 pi. It could be this one or this one. And, and the fact that we were getting the wrong answer indicates that this the angle we were getting was probably wrong. And so the correct angle is not the 25, but the, the 205. To further look at this, let, let's, let's go even further here and to really solidify what's going on. Let's look at our original position function. So this I'm looking at now cosine theta as a function of theta. So this is omega t plus phi naught. And so let's just draw the, the cosine graph first. So here's a, here's minus a, so here's, let's see, here's pi, 2 pi. And so what does the cosine function look like? It starts at am the amplitude uh, a, and then goes through 0, it goes to negative a, goes back through 0, and comes back up to a at 2 pi. So, so that's what the cosine of theta looks like. And so if we were to look here at... Uh, this 25.52 degrees, say that's somewhere in here. So this is about 25 degrees. What is this telling us about the motion of, of the, the, the position of the particle? Well, this is position versus time, right? This is the, the position function. And so this is telling us that the position is greater than zero, the position is above the uh, x-axis, and it's telling us that the velocity is less than zero because the slope of the position function is negative at this point. And so that's not, that wasn't the case, it was the opposite, negative 25. The position was negative and the slope was positive. So if we look at 180 degrees further, that's right here. So right here, this is about 205 degrees. At this position, what is this, what is this position? This is telling us that the position is less than zero and the velocity is greater than zero. And so in, in this regime, the signs of them are switched. And so for tangent, this expression right here, tangent of, of uh, phi naught, cannot distinguish between these two answers. And so you have to go back to the context of the problem to be able to know which set of solutions to take. Now the same thing could happen if, let's say, you had, you came up with an angle that was here, you wouldn't know of whether it's whether it was this one, whether it was this angle, or it was 180 degrees plus this angle, which would it be here. So just like there was a pair of solutions to tangent theta at the, the pink points, there's another, another pair of solutions here. And in this, for this solution, we know that x is less than zero and velocity is less than zero. And for this pair of solutions, x is greater than zero and the velocity is greater than zero. So again, if depending the tangent of phi naught cannot distinguish between these two solutions, you have to go back to the context of the problem to know whether the initial position and velocity are positive, the initial velocity and uh, position are negative. A final, a final way, I think, that really makes this clear is let's go back to this expression here. Now when looking at the tangent function it says well right the tangent um, it gives you two solutions to any expression but if you look at this right here this equation cannot tell to which value uh, 
v naught, this a minus sign is associated with. Well, what do I want to say? Let's look at these two expressions here. v naught and x naught. If v naught um, and x naught are both positive, or v naught or x naught are both negative, there's no difference in this expression. The same thing is if v naught is positive and x naught is negative, that is completely the same as v naught being negative and x naught being positive, because it doesn't matter sort of where the the sign, whether your numerator is positive or your denominator is, is the negative sign comes into the numerator or the denominator, it doesn't matter. So again, you can see that this expression cannot tell the difference between both being positive and both being negative, or one each being positive and one each negative. So that's the reason why I, really, I wanted to do this example to show you how from your initial conditions you can find the position as a function of time, but also this important subtlety in solving these expressions. Sometimes it's not always obvious and you can plug your numbers into a, your calculator and your calculator can give you the wrong answer through no fault of its own because in this case there were in fact two solutions that your calculator did not tell you and it was the second solution that was the correct one.